from him. Friends, to This Is My Life, we have a blessing for you today. Every program is a blessing, so I hope that you won't miss a single one of them. Frank is going to introduce our special guest today. Well, all right. Uh, today we have with us Donnie Thomas. And uh, Donnie is a pastor with Evangel Assembly of God. But I believe he has a message for us today. Amen. A word. Donnie is a preaching machine. That man can preach. I love to hear him preach. We're <laughs> going to have him back during the summer and let him uh, have a, a message. But today he's going to give you a testimony that goes along with the theme that we're having for February on love. So, Donnie, welcome back to This Thank Is you. My Life. Amen. I'm glad to be here. Sure uh, tell me, uh, how long have you been married, first of all? Been married uh, in March will be 29 years. 29 mm -hmm. years. Wow. Yes, wow, that's yes, great. Yes, all to the same woman. Yeah, eh? same woman. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> and you yes. have one child, a boy. One, one child, a boy, yes. That's great. Well, uh, did she grow up in a Christian home? I know we've had you talking about your past, but... She did. She grew up in a Christian home, and her, her dad, for many, many years, and still is a deacon of the church. Wow. So she's, uh, she's always been in church. Yes, yes, ma'am. Well, I'm going to just turn it over to you. You just start at the beginning, and as you go along, I may interrupt you and ask questions. That's Frank fine. Warren, okay? Yes, so ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Just tell us how God wove this love story together between Amen. the two of Amen. you. Amen. Well, once again, I'm, I'm glad to be with you today. And I, I do want to say, first of all, I, I just want to put out that uh, God will answer your prayer. I want to let you know that. And, and in 1989, uh, I was searching, looking for a companionship, uh, someone for my life. I, um, I had searched for a long time, and uh, I, you can only just say I, I was pretty lonely, uh, pretty lonely. And I, I just, uh, then uh, long about, uh, about the last of 1989, right into 1990, I was uh, sitting in church uh, one Sunday, and I was sitting on the platform with my dad, where my dad pastored the church. And all of a sudden, God spoke to me. And when God spoke to me, I said, yes, Lord. And my dad stopped the sermon and turned around to look at me. And, uh, you know, like I was saying something, because I spoke right out. It was that vivid and that real. And God told me, he said, uh, for one week, I want you to fast and I want you to pray for what you're searching for and for the companionship. And in one week, I'll hear and answer your prayer. And I said, okay, Lord, well, I did just exactly what God told me to do. And after one week, it was on a Saturday, I had had, uh, during, that, during that week, I'd had an invitation to uh, go and sing at, uh, at my wife, and not my wife at that moment, but at my wife's church. So I was looking forward to it, and it was going to be on Saturday. So uh, I got in the car with my mom, and we rode over to the church, and I saw uh, what was then going to be my future wife and and Nancy and uh, and see she was in charge of everything that was going on and my, I told my mom I said isn't she pretty she's beautiful and I she <laughs> said she sure is and I you know I had to go up and talk to her you know to find out where I was at on the program and when I went up and talked to her she turned around and she said well right now I'm kind of busy if you go over here and talk to this lady and I spoke, I kind of spoke up a little bit there you know and I said to, thought to myself I said well okay I'll do just that. Well, after it was all over with, the singing was all done. We had had a group that we knew of that, that, that was there that day. And uh, come, uh, come Monday, um, I had received a call from that group. And they said, uh, we was glad to see you on, on, sun, on Saturday at the, uh, at the singing. I said, well, I was happy to be there. And they said, well, by the way, uh, there was a young lady that was there that asked us, because we knew you, asked us if uh, you were married. And I said, well, who was that? And they told me who it was. And it was it was Nancy, of course. And after a little while, they hung up and I called her. I called Nancy and I said, I want to just thank you for inviting me to the, to the singing on Saturday. I appreciate it very much. Well, God bless you. And I hung up. Well, it was short, little, and sweet. short It was short and sweet. <laughs> well, I went into where my mom was at and told her what I'd done. She said, you get back in there and you call her again. Well, I got back in there and I called her, you know, and I said, well, I, I just, uh, you know, I wanted to call you and talk to you and I, I wanted to see if I could uh, meet with you and uh, we, we could just maybe have lunch together. Or, and she said, well, that would be fine. She said, I tell you what, uh, why don't you come over next week, you know, as far as um, my place is concerned and, and I'll make supper. And oh. I said, OK, that's fine. Well, that for the first night I was there, we, we got to talking, we got to know one another and come to find out she knew about all of my family. 
my family was raised in her church. Was she a good cook? She was a tremendous cook. She, <laughs> matter of fact, she made me my favorite: a country fried steak, mashed potatoes, and gravy. Oh, so I mean that that one, that one me hungry. <laughs> she she won my heart and won my my, my stomach, stomach at the same <laughs> time. Yes. But uh, we uh, we get get to know one another. Uh, matter of fact, it was after that that there's not one day that I didn't uh, I didn't see her. Uh, after a little while, uh, probably about a week and a half later, I just popped the question. I asked her, I said, would you marry me? And at that very moment, she didn't speak up and say yes. Uh, she said, well, I'm, I'm going to pray about it. She told me later on, she said, I knew what God wanted, but I didn't want to say yes right away. <laughs> and I said, well, okay then. Well, we were, uh, there was one night we were on our way to a gospel singing over in Live Oak, the Swanee River from singing. And, and uh, she was going to meet me there. And, as, and then I was going to bring her on home. Well, as we were coming home and going down the road, she said, you know the question that you asked me last week? Well, I want to go ahead and tell you yes. The answer is yes. Well, I about run off the road. I had such, <laughs> I had such joy. But, you know, I, I, I want to say this. Um, going back to what God told me, um, it was God ordained all the way. Uh, I mean, I was, I was thrilled about it because God had told me, you, you know, you lay down the fork and you fast and you pray for one week and I will, not maybe, but I will, you know, answer your prayer. And I thought back to that and I said, praise wow. God. I said, thank you, Lord, that you've answered my prayer and you brought someone in my life. Uh, now I have somewhere to go. I have someone to see now. So I was excited and I really was. And uh, I've never lost that excitement. I've, I've kept it since then. But we, uh, we dated. I found out she could play the piano. I found out she could sing. Um, we uh, we started uh, uh, probably for about a year though after the, 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 it was uh, in March of '91 uh, we got married. Uh, we had a God anointed, if I can say it like that, a, a wedding. It was tremendous. We probably had uh, close to 500 in attendance. Good, yes. Her wow. friends, uh, her church. My mom and dad's church, our friends, our family, uh, it, it was something. It really was. Uh, I want to say this on a little comical note. I, I was told to find the piece of white tape out on the platform, and that's where I was going to have to stand at, you know. So, okay. so I'm not paying no attention of how many people's there. I'm walking out, and I'm looking for the white tape. Well, <laughs> lo and behold, uh, one of the men that was in the wedding uh, moved my tape, <laughs> and they played a trick on me. I couldn't find my tape or where to go to. <laughs> Finally, the pastor kind of looked at me and said, uh, Brother Donnie, just, just come over here and stand. And I said, okay. Well, about that time, I turned around to watch my bride at that very moment walk through the door, and I noticed how many people were there. And I said, wow, this, this is wonderful. Well, she came down, and, and uh, as I said, uh, it was God-ordained, and, and God blessed that wedding. We had a wonderful wedding. Um, after it was over with, we, had, uh, we went to the mountains you know, for a week, and, and God just blessed us in a tremendous way. Uh, we, when we did get, uh, after we got married, we evangelized for a little while. We uh, kept jobs, and we would travel and preach and sing. And uh, what a joy it was to preach and sing with my wife. And uh, we saw souls saved and lives changed, and uh, we just had a tremendous time. But our love grew. And, you know, and I can say this, when you find someone very special in your life, allow God to, to grow that love inside of you, mm -hmm. and not only for the love for God, but the love for your soulmate, your helpmate. And uh, when you do that, you won't go wrong. You really won't go wrong. I'm not going to say we haven't had our ups and our downs. We have. But through it all, we've known who to turn to. We've turned to God. God has showed us His yes. mercy and His grace. And, and But uh, it's all built. Our marriage, our life with God, it's all built on love. And the Bible tells us in in, in, first, in first Corinthians, the love story, it talks about, you know, there's many things that you can have. Without love, though, it doesn't uh, mean a thing. And That's so right. what we try to do as far as our, our life is concerned, not only I, I don't go a day and a night of going to bed without telling my wife, I love you. I love oh, you. that's precious. That's precious. And that's, uh, so that's what, uh, you know, I, that's the way we got started. That's the way we were, uh, you know, that God put us together. And now, uh, as I said, in, in March of uh, this year, it will be 29 years that we have been married. And, and, uh, and, and I thank God for that. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm happy, you know, yes. and my wife is happy. And now we, we have a son. And he's 14 years old, and he's he's happy. So we have one happy family. And as we were talking about earlier, we have a dog too. So he's happy. So we're we're, we're just we're we're a family though that is Christ centered. 
Christ-centered. And that's what I say for marriage, for life, for your home. If it's not God-ordained, if it's not God-Christ-centered, uh, it won't amount to much. That's for sure. But, uh, you know, love, the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. Right. And uh, so I, I thank God for the love and the grace and the mercy of God. Well, that's a wonderful story, isn't it, Frank? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. that is and just wonderful. As you were talking about love, I was thinking how our society uses that word. Yes, sir. And uh, they freely. toss it around just indiscriminately. Yes, sir. And they say, this is love, and that's love, and that's love, and that's love. But uh, biblical love, um, the agape love, that's a, a whole different level above what most people normally experience yes, it in is. life. Yes, it is. And that's the kind of love that's needed to really nurture and hold a marriage together. It is. Because we do still live in a world permeated by sin. And it's constantly poking at you or dragging at your flesh or trying to get you to do the wrong thing. Yes, sir. And so there's, there's, there's conflicts that arise but that, it's that kind of love that, as she said, will cover the multitude of sin. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It, uh, it will. I mean, I've, uh, uh, I don't know how many people that I've counseled with and talked with before that they, they tell me, they said they've, uh, they've searched for, for love. I was saying they searched the world over and I couldn't find it. And they've, they've tried to find love. And they said that, that uh, there was something missing exactly. inside of their heart. And that's what, you know, that's what sin will do. You think that you can yes. find love and you can find it in the world. But what's in the world is here today and gone tomorrow. That's but right. the love of God is something that the Bible talks about just like life. It's everlasting. Mm -hmm. And what you can find in Jesus Christ is everlasting. So I would pray with them and I'd talk to them and they would say, well, thank you. And then some would come back and give me a testimony later on of how, you know, well, God answered my prayer and, and God brought someone into my life. And uh, you know, where I thought that I was going on the right road and found the right one, God shut that door on me. And I said, well, the Bible talks about that God can shut a door that no man can open and open a door that no man can shut. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to, to love, as, as you were saying, it's a lot more than what the, you know, what the world can offer. You know, it's, it's a fading thing in, in, as far as the world is concerned. But uh, in God and, and finding God, it doesn't fade away, but it grows every single day. Yes, amen. And, that, and the only way to get that love, that agape love, is to be born again. Because born again. God is love. Amen. The Scripture doesn't say He has love. Right. He is love. Amen. And the only way to get that into you is to be born again. You've Amen. got to have the Spirit of God living in you to make you capable Amen. of that kind of love. It's a, a, the, the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. And Lord. sometimes it takes a while for fruit to grow. Uh, it, it sure does. It sure does. <laughs> but at least if the seed's planted in there, you have a good head start. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah. You, you do. And, uh, uh, I want to ask you some questions, Donnie, yes, for the sake of our viewers out there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how did you handle times of strife or discord? I was always raised as far as uh, to, to pray and seek the face of God. So I had uh, no question whatsoever when those things began to come into my life or my life or our family's life. And uh, being the head of the, of the home, I had always said, well, I've got a good wife to pray with me. But I knew that I was going to have to seek God myself. And I knew who to turn to. You know, the Bible says, you know, that if you search after me, God said, you'll find me. And I said, well, God, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to find you. I need something. That, you know, I've, I've got this going on in my life. Uh, we've had some, you know, strife. We've had some stressful moments as far as our marriage was concerned. No problem in our areas, but we've had with, with people or with the world or situations of the world. Um, early on in our marriage, we had to be taught a lot as far as how to handle family life. Uh, so we had, we've had the stressful moments, but through it all, through it all, we found a place on our knees in prayer and seeking the face of God and calling on God and saying, God, we don't know how and we don't know where to go, but you do. Yeah. And God gave me something a long time ago that I have told every person. I've got it maybe written in every Bible that I have. And it says the task ahead of you is not as great as the power behind you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that is so, good. Uh, yes, ma'am. The and task I have, uh, ahead of you 
it's not as great as the power behind you. Not as oh, great. Not as great. Not as great. And, oh, and, and, I like that. And we've used it. We've used it. And that's what I say to everyone today. And I want to say it to you again. Remember, the task ahead of you is not as great as the power behind you. And that power is not a power of the world, but that power is God's power. Can I say to you today, God's on your side. God is faithful. God's true. God won't turn his back on you. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. If you're out there today in strife and stress and something's going on, Jesus is your best friend. Turn your yes. face before God and call on the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Uh, another question, Donnie. People that uh, they, they are in a love relationship with somebody. Uh, do you think they should wait any specific amount of time before they enter into marriage? You think they should seek counseling or what? How do yes, ma'am. I, I was, uh, um, I think the only reason why that myself and my wife didn't really seek after counseling is because we were part of a, a pastor's home and a deacon's home. And, uh, he had, she had a wonderful pastor. And so, but we did go, as far as counseling is concerned, we did go and let him talk with us, um, explain marriage to us, uh, explains ins and outs. Said, look here, when you, when you say, uh, somebody told me one time, said, when you say you do or I do, you've done it. You know, so I said, well, it's a pretty well, good way of putting it. But, uh, you know, and I'm, but I'm ready to say I do. I, you know, and but we talked about it after that. And I, I was ready to marry her right then. She was ready to marry me after saying she would. But we said, well, why don't we wait about a year? And in that year, you'd be surprised. I thought I knew her. She thought she knew me. But we began to grow. We began to grow. We did receive counseling. We were talked to. We, we said, look here, don't enter into this marriage lightly. Don't take it lightly. Take it as something you know that is biblical, and that God, you know, it's, so it's biblical toward you know when you when you uh, find a good, you, he that findeth a, a wife findeth a good thing, and uh, when you when you leave your mom and your dad and you cling on to your spouse or your wife, you become one, and uh, so. Right. But we 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 didn't want to really just hear that. Uh, we wanted to experience that. So in that year, we talked marriage. We said we're looking forward to the day we get married, but we begin to grow with one another. So I want to encourage, you know, when you when you make plans to get married, you know, don't get married right away. You know, seek that counseling. You know, seek out someone that can help you and talk to you. And not to say that you're not going to get married, but look at the Word of God and get in the Word of God and see what it's like as far as biblical standards is concerned. How can I build my marriage when I do get married? How can I build it on the steadfast Word of God? Because I know that the world's going to fade away and pass away, but on Christ the solid rock, if you stand on Him, you'll find that grace and that mercy that you really need. So I want to honestly say, don't jump into it. Take it gradually, walk it out, and let God order your footsteps. Uh, Donnie, for the people out there that are watching that are lonely and they desire a mate, and uh, I know some, you probably know some, and uh, some might think, well, God says he's no respecter of persons, but I've been waiting a long time. What would you say to them? I want you to just look in the camera and talk to those people. As for myself, I had waited for a long time. I had uh, I, I'd searched. I, I tried to find, uh, when I'd get off from work, I tried to find things to do. I was lonely. I wanted to go home. I, I saw my friends getting married. I saw them going out. I saw them having a, a good time. And uh, they'd invite me, you know, but it seemed like I was just a crutch a little bit. That's the way I felt because I was just, I was lonely to begin with. And I didn't have anyone really to talk to or comp have companionship with. And, uh, you know, but, but I do want to say this, that uh, that loneliness happened for, for a good while. But then finally God came through for me. You know, God answered my prayer, but, uh, but God didn't answer my prayer until I had to do something myself. And that was, you know, I had to fast and pray and seek the face of God. And the Bible says some things only come through prayer and fasting. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying that God's going to lead you in that area. But what I am saying, wait on the Lord. And even though you're lonely and even though you're looking and searching for a helpmate, the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord, God's going to renew their strength and God's going to help them and bless them. So don't get in a hurry. Seek the face of God and call on God and, and, and allow God to lead the right person into your life, just as he did for me when he brought a wonderful, wonderful lady into my life, Nancy. And she helps me. And, she, and, and I want to honestly say that she helps me every single day. We are one and we work together as one, but us three are one, the Father and the Son, Father first, the Son. 
and then myself and my wife. So I say to you today, where you're lonely, where you're searching or wanting someone in your life, don't make a mistake and find the wrong one. Pray, seek the face of God, call on God and say, Lord, I need your help. And I can promise you because God's no respecter of person. If God did it for me, God can certainly do it for you. Mm-hmm. And don't settle for an Ishmael. Wait for an Isaac. Right. Wait, Amen. in other words, for God's best, Amen. okay? Amen. God's in the miracle working business and he can put people together. Believe me, if he hadn't have put me and Frank together, there is no way in the natural that we would have ever been together. But God and you know, the Bible tells us, doesn't it, Donnie, to seek Him first Amen. and His kingdom, Amen. then He'll add all things to you. Amen. Amen. I know with us, it wasn't until I got the point that I really sought God first that God began to work and move in me and Frank's life. Isn't that Amen. the way you have seen it? I've seen it that way. You know? And then that's the, that's the Bible way. Yeah, and you won't go wrong going the Bible way. I mean, no, that's, you uh, never that's go for sure. Wrong you know, and uh, you know when when he says seek uh, him first, it's not seeking the affairs of the world or the things of the world. He says seek me out, call on me. And I've told many people this before. God is the one that created us, so God knows us. He knows the number of hair on our head, so He yes. knows what we can do and what we can't do. And if He says wait, wait, He says stand still and know that I'm God, then stand still and know that He's God. Right. And just him. obey him. Obey. Right That's all we need to do. Right. Amen. Just Amen. obey. Amen. Just obey. Um, and believe me, it's worth the wait. Amen. When God does it, isn't it? Amen. All it's those years that you had a loneliness, they just faded away they, once they, they, they were she gone. Came, yeah. They were gone. And that and that's the remarkable thing of God. I didn't even think about you know, what am I going to do today? I knew what I was going to do. I was going to go to where my future wife was going to be. And, and even today, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't like going out town without her. I don't like going to, you know, a day without her. I, I want her by my side and her, she wants the yeah. same thing. So we're, uh, we're together and one in this. You know? right. so it, uh, You're seeing the uh, outworking of when he talks about the two shall become one amen. flesh. Amen. And that's the, the part of the process there is, is what you're seeing there. And, you know, I think the world's concept of marriage is you just take two boards and nail them together. But I think with God, it's a little more complex than that. It's yes, more it like puzzle pieces that Amen. fit together. Amen. Amen. And that it's a weaving and a sewing together Amen. that makes a strong bond. Amen. Amen. You know, and it you're, is. you're becoming that one flesh. Amen. And that uh, I have talked to many people and uh, counsel many people that's been in, that's wanted to get married. Uh, you know, and matter of fact, I had one one wanted to get married one night or the next day, and uh, about midnight the night before, he knocks and beats on my door. <laughs> he says, "I think I've made a mistake." I said, "Well, it's about too late now, you know." But uh, and, you know, come to find out that marriage. Uh, didn't work because they they hurried up into it. They uh, mm-hmm. uh, they didn't get to know one another. I I want to honestly say this, uh, you know, out there today, uh, get to know one another. I mean, get to know what she likes, get to know what he likes, what they don't like. Uh, find it out. Uh, I was just thinking about something as far as um, you know, yesterday is concerned, um, and I do want to say this. I was going to have to take care of a meeting yesterday that I was going to be in. Well, I was sitting at my desk and I said, oh, my goodness gracious, I would forgot this and I forgot to put this down as notes. And I, did, I did, what am I going to do? My phone rung. And my wife said, I'm going to email you something on over. And, uh, and it, it, it was what I needed. She said, I was sitting here and I was just thinking, you know, that uh, you maybe don't have that as far as your file is concerned and your meeting. So I'm going to send what you need on over. I made it up for you. Wow. And, and I just said, well, thank you, Lord. And, yeah. and I believe that's what you begin to do through God. Mm-hmm. You begin to, uh, you know, uh, think like the other one, if I can say it yeah, like that. You begin, right. you begin to act like the other one. Now, I've told my wife that before, and she said, Lord, have mercy. What are we going to do? You know? <laughs> so, and, and, uh, you know, and I said, I won't go say that to her. See, the, the man, you know, he learns in life a little bit of things. But, but, I, but, but, but that just he shows you He knows right when there. to shut up and when to speak. You better day. believe it. You better believe it. And I know exactly what to do. And I t- and then, it's yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding on that. I mean, it, uh, we're, we don't, we don't do that. That's for sure. You know, we're, we're one in this thing. As I, we were talking earlier, we, we don't make decisions without each other. I, mm. I can say that we, uh, uh, there's a lot of times that uh, somebody wants us to do something. 
I said, well, I'll talk to my wife about it. And uh, she says the same thing. Let me talk to my husband about it. Mm -hmm. And then we go and we talk to the Lord about it. Yes. And, uh, you know, when we were when we first ever came on our program here, mm -hmm. uh, I looked at my wife and she said, well, let's pray about it. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and let's see what God wants for us. And we did. And praise God, we've been we've been on yeah. the program. So, right. you know, we pray on everything. Yes. I, I don't that's care. You know, sure. I'm talking about things that's even outside of church. We yeah. pray on, you know, uh, a car sure. or, uh, you know, where are we going to get uh, this to take care of this bill? What do we know, Lord? Help us. So everything is centered around prayer. We yes. do it all, you know, in yes. prayer. Well, I, I, I know this question from what you said and from knowing you, but the storms, how have you weathered them? Oh. The storms that have come, not necessarily in your marriage, but they have affected you because you're one and storms come. Well, I do want to say this, storms will come, but God will outlast your storm. <laughs> you know, God will take care of that. Uh, there's been times we've been on the on, in the sea of life and then it talks to and fro. And, uh, you know, not particularly our marriage. Our marriage has been strong, but we've had situations to come into our home, things that was very unexpected. But uh, things that are unexpected, we go to a, to a God that is able. A God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above whatever we ask or whatever we think. And when we go to God, He takes care of it. Uh, we've had storms before that have lasted longer than we thought that was going to last. And we wondered, I'll be honest with you, we have wondered where God, where are you at? Yeah. And uh, But sometimes, and I heard a preacher put it like this one time, and we've used it many times. Somewhere, you know, sometimes you have to go the long way around to get to the altar. A lot of times in churches, you know, you sit in an area to where maybe the altar's right in front of you and you can run right to it. But sometimes you have to go the long way. Sometimes you have to face the storm. You have to go through the trial. But God will certainly make that trial a blessing and he'll turn it around on you. So storms will come. Make no mistake about it. As long as we live in this flesh and live in this world, storms will come. But God will bless. God will carry you through it. And somewhere on the other side of that storm, there's a sun and it's going to shine and continue to shine. Amen. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, Frank, do you have anything you want to add? Well, I, the only thing I had on my heart was the, the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, starting with 21 and on. And it uh, outlines how husbands and wives should treat each other. But uh, I would recommend the message version to me, it puts it in today's language that, that, that really uh, brings it out so well. And we don't have time for me to read it now. But if you can get a hold of the message version, Amen. Oh. And that's Ephesians chapter 5 and start at verse 21. Amen. Time's up. God loves you. So do we. Amen.